Did you carry your Bibles? Go with me the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 13. And then I will jump to Nehemiah 2, Matthew 5, 13. Then I will get to the book of Nehemiah chapter 2. We were reading from the message translation. And this is what the message translation says. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people test godliness? You've lost your usefulness and you will end up in the garbage. If you lose your saltiness, how will people test godliness? You've lost your usefulness, the Bible says, according to message translation, and you will end up in the garbage. Nehemiah chapter 2. Let me read from verse 1. The Bible says, In the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Ataxas, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. This is because when you served the king, one rule was you are supposed to be always happy and smiling when you come before the king. No servant was allowed to come with a sad face, with a long face, with a donkey face. Are we together? So tell your neighbor, neighbor, we have come before the king of kings. Smile a bit. So Nehemiah said, I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid because he knew there is a law I've broken here. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my faith not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruin? and its gates have been destroyed by fire. The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to God of heaven, and I, and, I asked him, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah, where my ancestors are buried, so that I can rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked him, how long? will your journey take and when will you get back it it pleased the king to send me so i set the time let me just jump to chapter 8 chapter 6 sorry let's go to chapter 6 verse 15 this is now after he had been sent now verse 15 says so the war was completed on the 25th of elul in 52 days, he asked for favor to go build the wall. And when he was granted the favor, he went and rebuilt the wall in 52 days, and the wall was finished. I want us to continue with what we started last Sunday, and we are looking at the series Flavored, being flavored because we are the flavor of the world. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being with us. And as we continue with your series, part two, we are praying, Lord, that your anointing will rest upon me to minister your word, to feed your people. And Lord, open our eyes to see what you have for us today. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody shout and say amen? amen. Can I hear a bigger amen? amen? Let me take you back to Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. I don't want to do a recap of what we did last Sunday, so I will just go straight to part two of what I started last Sunday. The Bible in this portion describes Christians using three major words, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, you are the salt of the earth. So he says, you are the salt. Tell your neighbor, you are the salt of the earth. Not of the food. Of the? You are the salt of? This is Jesus saying. Then verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. Look at your neighbor, say, you are the light. So number one, it calls us what? Jesus calls us what? Uh-huh. Then two, he calls us what? Light of where? Of the world. Then verse 14, he says, A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. So the other word that he uses to describe you is a city. Say, I'm a city. Aha. Uh -huh. If you don't believe it, keep quiet. But if you believe it, I want you to say, I'm a city. Now, a city is not a village. Are we together? A city is not a a city is not a town. A city is a big place. Praise the name of the Lord. A city. So a village can, it graduates from a village to become uh, a town if we are to jump. You know, others would start say village, shopping center, town, into what? A city. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you not glad that he describes you as a city? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I have good news for you. I'm not a village. Uh -huh. Tell them again, I am not a shopping center. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there are things that cannot be found in a, shop, I mean, in a shopping center. Is it true? There are things you will not find in a shopping center. Then tell them, I'm not a town. Because a town can consist of one tribe. Am I speaking the, same, the right thing? It can consist of people of the same class. You are co cosmopolitan. You are metro city. You are big. So say, I am a city. So salt, he says you are salt. Then he says you are light. Then he goes ahead to say you are a city. And then he says, a city built on a hill, uh, it cannot be healed. Then he says, light that, that is lit and cannot be hidden. It has to be put on a lampstand. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are three things that, that are very important for us to really understand what I'm about to, to draw to your attention today. Uh, number one, he says clearly, you are the salt. And you know, when you look at the salt, there are some things that happen when you are looking at the salt. There are some things, and you, they are very important things, because salt does not work uh, with loudness, with a lot of visibility. Salt works in secret. So when you put salt, one thing that salt does, it penetrates into what you have put it in and it works in secret it is hidden you don't see salt but you can test salt so when you're taking food you don't see salt but you can test salt so salt is hidden and salt penetrates and salt works from the inside to outside it works from the inside to outside. Salt works secretly. Now, I know many people like this characteristic because we don't like to be seen. We don't like to be known. We don't want people to really, we don't like to be visible. We like to do things 
in a secret way. You want to be, you know what we always say, chini amaji. Yeah, there are people who just say me, I just want to be chini amaji. I don't, I, wa I want to operate as a CIA, you know. As a CIA, a Christian in action. I just, I'm acting but no one should know. I'm just a CIA. No one should know who I am, what I'm doing. And it is okay because it is one of the characteristics. Are we together? It's one of the things, but you see, at the end of the day, there is something that has to be So, there is a part of Christianity that cannot be hidden. There is a part of you that cannot be hidden and should not be hidden. Can you say again, I'm a light? Light does not work from inside outside. Light does not work secretly. Light is very visible. Light works from outside inside. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when light comes... It has to dispel light in any darkness. When light comes, it actually attacks darkness. It doesn't penetrate darkness. It attracts, it attacks, sorry, darkness. To the point that darkness has to do what? Give way. So there is a portion that he says about you, even though you are salt and you need to penetrate you need to work secretly there is also the other side of you that is a light that is very visible now he did not end there whenever you see Jesus repeating something to emphasize on something it means it's very important so he says a city that is built is on a hill cannot be hidden. And when men light a candle, they don't put it under the table. They put it on a lampstand and put it somewhere. Are we together? So when he says a city cannot be hidden, he's saying something that at the end of the day, everything about it should not be hidden. We cannot be a flavored church if we are a hidden church. You cannot be a flavored Christian bringing flavor on this earth, the taste that needs to be there. The God kind of flavor, the God flavors on earth if you are always hidden. There is a part of you, there is a season in your life, there is a part that needs to be very visible. People should see. Because a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Praise the name of the Lord. So I came, I came today just to, to bust some bubble as I begin here. That some of you who like hiding. I don't want to be known. I don't want to be seen. I don't want people to recognize me. That is half of this gospel because for you to change something you have to come out praise the name of the lord for us to bring the impact that we need to bring we have to realize that we are not just salt we are the light and where we are people must see where you are people must know very few amens. You are a city on a hill. You know, the city that Jesus was describing, he was talking about walking in the valley. And then in the, you see the hill. On the hill, there is a city. So wherever you are, you cannot afford but see the city. Hallelujah. That's what I want to tell you as I begin, that time is coming, that regardless of what people do, they cannot afford to ignore you. They will never ignore you. You cannot be ignored. Amen. Hello? You are not a non-entity in this society. 
you are someone that is very viable, you know, and at the end of the day, people will see who you are. And people must recognize who you are because what God gave you cannot be hidden. Some of you are hiding and you're trying to hide it thinking that it is going to be hidden forever. No, no, no. You are a city on a hill. You are a light on a lampstand. So there is a position you are standing in and your visibility has to be there. People have to know that you are there. You have to be bold. Amen. You have to be bold. That is the reason why you see, wherever you go, a Muslim, you know he's a Muslim. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. From what they wear, even from what they greet one another. Some of you don't even want to say praise the Lord in front of your boss. You don't. When you are Mutunguyas. But let me tell you, there is a part of you that has to be very visible. Hello? If you're selling cars, there is a part of you that has to be very visible. When you're showing people, let me show you how this cassette works. This, this, this car has a surround system, you know. It's a nice car. Let me just get in so that I can give you a feel of the speaker in this place. When you're placing music there, Hey, my brother, it has to be a Christian music. Why are you playing bongo whatever that is not Christian? And then that is what you are using to, to advertise the thing. Now you people are not ready for me. I'm talking about being flavored. They have to see. There is a part of you that has to come out. Hello? The songs that you sing in your office, they need to bring out who you are. How can you be, you're in the office, the only song that you're just singing is Bob Marley's song. The only song that you're singing is all the others. And, and when people hear you humming, it has, there's a part. Are you feeling me? A city cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. Light attacks. It is on a lamp's stand. It has to be, it has to be very, hey, can you say very visible? I cannot hear, say very visible. If you are here and your neighbors don't know that you are born again, my brother, you've not started living to salvation. Today I'll preach it. <laughs> Hello? You are here and you do business and your partners don't, don't even know that you are born again. In fact, it's, a, it's an abomination. They don't even know that which church you go to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine? We should pour water on you. How, how can you be a member here? And they don't even know which church you go to. It is an error. <laughs> Hello? Everyone should know that you are born again, including your doctor. Hello? Including all your doctors, your doctor, your gynecologist, all of them should know you are born again. Some don't even want to. Your saloonist should know. The reason why she keeps gossiping th those things telling you. It's because she doesn't know. She doesn't know. You're just there. So let me go slowly. So he says you are the salt of the earth. You are what? When you read the Bible, there is no word as sugar in the Bible. No sugar. Only salt. Only salt. So when you become a, the salt of the earth, then we are safe. When you are a sugar mommy, we are not safe. Allow me to use this word. You can only be a salt mommy. Because salt mommies affect you in the right way. Salt daddies affect you in the right way. Sugar daddies take you the wrong way. 
So when you read the Bible, there is no sugar. No sugar. We are not described as the sugar of the world. <laughs> we are not the sugar, my brother. I know he sugars my tea. He butters my bread. But you are not the sugar of the world. No, you are the salt. And the salt does something. He says flavors. It brings flavor into this world. Now understand something here very quickly. Flavor is very important. So when we are called, we are called to be flavorful people. People who are full of salt. Flavorful. It is not just a description. It is a calling that you have. Being salt is not a description. It is what? A calling that God has given unto you. That everywhere you go, people should feel the effect of that flavor. Everywhere you go. So flavor is not what you know, but who you are. This flavor is not what you know, but who you are. If you get salt on the surface, it is salty. Cut it in the middle, it is still what? You will not find sugar inside the salt. All the way, it is what? Salty. It is not about what you know, because the saddest thing that we have is that people know more about God and much about God, but they are not godly inside. People know about scriptures and they read the scriptures, but they do not leave the scriptures. People profess and confess to be Christians, but they do not live a life of a Christian. People say we are holy, but they are not holy. Integrity is very important. So when we check you, you should be inside out salt. It's not about what you know, but who you are. Have you ever found people who know too much and they can advise you, but yet they don't leave what they're advising you? Hello? I guarantee you in the society we are living in, go if you need marriage counseling. You can find it anywhere. There are singles who can really encourage and counsel those who are married. Singles. You don't even have a boyfriend. In fact, the last one you had, you, don't, you didn't even keep. You've lost. You've been engaged 14 times and all that. But when it comes to giving advice about marriage, you have never been married. Ah, there are people who know. Have you ever found such kind of people? They have never been married, but they have advice. Let me tell you, this is how you handle a husband. And they start telling, Helen, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. Yet, all the Kenyan spectators who know about who should be playing at what position in Manu and at that what position in Arsenal and who should be placed number one, number two, number three. Yet, they themselves are not footballers. We have not even produced a, a football team that has done wonders. But ask about football. Let me tell you. Ha, they will advise you. They will advise you. They will even say, I think Mourinho needs to do one, two, three, four, five things. The, the problem with Mourinho is this one, that one, this one, the other one, this one. Ah, if he was here, Ninge Mwambia. Ninge Mwambia. But we give you the ball. We tell you just dribble. Dribble. One. Go to even five. You don't know. But advice. Hey, hey. Praise the name of the Lord. If I was the pastor of that church, if I was the pastor, I wish pastor would give me six minutes. Six, just six. Just. Huh? You really know. There are even those who really, they have never been married. <laughs> but you know, I think, I think, I think that man, the wife he has selected is a wrong wife. 
Angenuliza mimi ningemwambia the one to select. Now you are single, so where you select wako kwanza? Before you start telling people, <laughs> ningemwambia who to select. And, and, and they will tell you how much they know, but saltiness is not about who, what you know. It's who you are. Who you are. We don't want to know whether you know how to quote scriptures, how to sing nice songs, how to usher people into church, how to come, how to pray. Our biggest question is this, are you what you are praying? Are you living that life? Because salt, the flavor of salt is in itself. It is not just about what you know. Praise the name of the Lord. When we talk about salt, it's not just about, when we read the story of, of, of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 29, can, can we get it on the screen quickly? I, I try to explain something. Is it okay? Let me try to explain something here. Then I will get, say I'm flavored. I cannot hear. Say I'm flavored. Now, this is a woman who came to the man of God and, he said, and she, said to her, she said to her husband, I know that there is this man who often comes our way. He's a holy man of God. Move on, move on, move on, move on. Let's make a small room. Uh huh. Now, Go down, go down, go down. I want, I want to explain something. Uh -huh. go, go down to verse 12, verse, where the child dies. Where the child dies. Let me, let me try and get it. Where the, the, the child dies. 30. Take us, take us to verse 30. Take us to verse 30, we see. Verse 30. Now, verse 20, the kid has died. Verse 30. Don't worry. It's, it's the, let, me, let me just paraphrase. So what happened, when the lights come back, you tell me. What happened is there was this woman, the Shunammite woman, got a baby. The baby died. When the baby died, she ran to the man of God. And when she ran to Elisha, she told Elisha what has happened. Then Elisha said, tell Gehazi, go, take my stuff, lay it on the child, and the child will come back. So Gehazi ran with the stuff to lay it on the child. But when he laid it on the child, nothing happened. Tried what he could, nothing happened. Tried what he could, nothing happened. And when the man of God arrived, Guess what? He prayed over the child and then bent over the child, laid over him, and the child came back to life. Why? Because the stuff is a stuff that did not belong just to Elisha. It was the stuff that he had, and he had seen the stuff working since the days of Elijah. And he's telling Gehazi, use this stuff to bring back the child. But because Gehazi's life was not a life of integrity. At the end of the day, he could not do anything. When the man of God came, he laid over the child, his life over the life of a child. His life over the life of a child. And because he was a man of integrity, he was living what he was walking and living what he was saying. Guess what? That brought the child back to life. I want to tell you, you can know how to quote scriptures but when your life is not in the scriptures when what you're doing is not in the scriptures your integrity will not bring the flavor that is needed you will not create the impact that is needed because this thing is about you your integrity are you a christian who just professes i'm a christian or you're living a life of integrity so flavor it's not just about on how much you know. It is who you are. That is the reason why he told them, you will come before me and say, Father, Father, did you not raise the dead? You knew how to raise the dead. Did we not cast out demons? You knew how to cast out demons. Did we not do miracles in your name? Yes, you knew how to do miracles in my name. But he will say, depart from me. Because who you are, I don't know. There is a people I know, and I know them not by the miracles they do, 
but who they are. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is important for you to know, check yourself. Integrity is very important. Number two, flavor is not how big you are, but how effective it can be. It is not about how big you are. Have you, have you, have you seen cologne? Let me try and use cologne. Have you seen cologne that, that all what you need to do is to use a small bit of it? There are some colognes when you use, you have to use almost half of the bottle. You use it in the morning. By the time it is lunchtime, <laughs> no, one, no one can smell anything. Nothing. Not, it, it's, it's, oh, it, that's a perfume. There's a perfume. It's not a cologne. I'm told it's not a cologne. <laughs> it's a perfume. You use something. Someone might think you're using a fire extinguisher. So that at least you can smell nice when you're walking. But now, when it gets to some time, that thing has faded away. And someone has to use a little bit, and it doesn't fade away. Not even the whole day. There are those that don't fade away. You wash it, it is still there. Ushazi ona iso. Assume, ataka mayako ni yo afa extinguisher. Assume. Usha ona. Usha ona yo. Assume, assume. Praise the name of the Lord. Because they are different. I think it is here I was explaining to people. One day saying, uh, we, were, uh, we were in France. And, and I went to this particular shop thinking it's the normal cologne I know. And then this guy told me, try this one. So I took it. I wanted to try the way I always try my colognes. He said, no, 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 no. This you don't do like that. It's very expensive. Very, very expensive. Let me show you how you do it. I said, okay. He said, I will do a complimentary for you. He said, move. So I had to move behind. Then he did this in the air. Shh. Then he told me, walk inside. <laughs> you do this, then you just walk inside. Let me tell you, the whole time I was smelling that thing. Because there are those you walk inside. There are those you have to clear the can. <laughs> but my, my, my point is this. Small quantity affects. Are we together? There is small quantity of salt can, can affect a big chunk of meat. It is not in the bigness for you to bring the flavor, the God flavor, it is not in the bigness. Some of you are shying away to do something because you think you have to come to the measure of that thing. No, the quantity you are, the smallness of it that you know can affect a big thing. That's why Jesus said, he looked at them and the Bible says clearly, he says in Luke chapter 12 verse 32, do not be afraid little flock for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Do not be afraid. You can be little, but the Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. So, it is not in the bigness. Small quantity of salt affects a big batch of food. And I came to tell you, you can do wonders wherever you are if you only realize, I am flavored. It is not in the bigness. It is in the effectiveness. If I am effective, I am able to do what I need to do. The only thing I need to do is to make sure I am effective. Can somebody say, be effective? I cannot hear say, be effective. It is very, very important for you to know at any level you can do it. So Nehemiah, he is not the king, but he's doing things that kings do. Kings build kingdoms and cities. This man is not a king, but he's rebuilding a city. I came to tell you, you can still do yours. You don't need to be the president of this country to bring change, to bring flavor, to bring a revolution, to bring something different. You don't need to be an elder in that place. You don't need to be a pastor in that church to do it. You can do it at the level you are in. It is in the effectiveness, not the bigness. Salt is small, but it changes everything. Nehemiah was not a prophet, but the words that he spoke were like the words of a prophet. Nehemiah was not a priest, but you see him 
calling the priests and even encouraging the priests and taking time even with the city to do what? To reconcile back with God, to bring revolution. He was not a, a Levite in the worship uh, of, of the temple, but he gathers worshipers and he begins to worship. I came to tell you, wherever you are, you are able to bring flavor. He is not a warrior. But guess what? When he was rebuilding, he had a sword. He was ready for battle. And he told people, if push be to, comes to push, we will fight. Praise the name of the Lord. We will fight. That is why I want to tell you, please don't try me. Because there is a level in me and there is an ability in me that can come out and you would wonder, was it there or not? Praise the name of the Lord. That is the reason why you should tell your neighbor, don't try me. There is a part in me that you don't even know. You might think I'm just here, sitting here as a member in this church. But you know what? If push comes to push, I can do this. I can do that. If there is no pastor, I will get the microphone and preach. If there is no singer, I will get to the place and sing. If there is no keyboardist, I will do something. I can do something. You must be at a level where you are able to do something. Not just that one thing that you're seated there thinking, just one thing. Ah, uh ah, -uh. this man did great thing. He's a builder. And for 52 days, the man that was a cup bearer becomes an architect, becomes a foreman, becomes a contractor, and he finishes his contract 52 days. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, where is your effectiveness? Where is your effectiveness? I also want you to understand something, that flavor is not in your title. It is not in your title. It is in your impact. There are people who have titles, but they've not impacted anyone. True or false? They have not impacted anyone. Haven't you seen in countries where people, people can rule for some years and there's a lot of change? And people can rule for a lifetime and there is no change. Praise the name of the Lord. Haven't you seen that? You have to bring an impact. Tell your neighbor you have to bring an impact. You have to bring an impact. It is not in your title. It is not in your title. Which, which makes me to ask this question because salt has to have flavor. Tell your neighbor you have to have flavor. Are you bringing impact wherever you are? Are you bringing the flavor that you need to have in that particular place? Let me just ask you. If your husband had been married, I mean had married another woman, would he be a better husband than the one he is now? Someone is shouting. <laughs> if your wife had married another husband and not you, would she be a better wife than what she is now? <laughs> Hello? If your boyfriend, for those who have boyfriends, would be a boyfi of a certain girl, would, she, would he be a better boyfriend going to heaven than what he is now? If your girlfriend would be a better babe than she is now, and he would, she would have married, I mean, become a babe for someone else. Would she be a better one than the one she is now? I'm asking questions. If someone else would be a member of this church and not you, would this church be better than the way it is now? I asked myself the same question. If another pastor would be the pastor of this church, would this church be better? than the way it is now. It is not in the title. It is in the impact you bring. Praise the name of the Lord. Salt brings impact. Because of the flavor, it has to change the food. Something has to change. And if someone else would have done it better than you are doing, then where you are, you are doing a disservice. Hello? There is someone who said, if you live somewhere and people don't miss you, then no, you never did anything there. You did nothing at all. 
They never missed you. You come and say, Aya, I'm done missing. <laughs> Just know <laughs> you never ever did anything. So you need to bring impact. Tell your neighbor you need to bring impact. And this impact has to be there. It has to be there. It has to be there. Quickly, because of my time, I'm seeing my time is going. So how, how, how can we ensure that we maintain this flavor that God gives to us? You are here to bring the God flavors on earth. Number one, be willing to break some rules. Be willing to break some rules. Nehemiah was not the leader. He was not the lead leader. And he went there, surveyed the place at night. No one was there. No one was seeing. He had not told everyone what he wanted to do. And he began to bring a revolution. He led. People are waiting for those on top to lead. But the man started leading from the bottom. And he started bringing a revolution from the bottom. And when he did it, guess what? God allowed them to build the nation, to rebuild it in 52 days. Understand, my brother and my sister, sometimes you have to break the rules if you have to bring the flavor that needs to be brought. You cannot realize God's flavor and you cannot release God's flavor on earth if you are too conventional. If you are moving like a, 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 tra a train, a train has to be in one track forever. Year in, year out, you are in that same track. Year in, year out, if we find you, you are still singing the same song. Year in, year out. If we find you, you're still doing the same thing. There is an importance for you to know sometimes you will need to diversify but still keep the same vision. And it requires you to say, I will break some rules. I will break some rules. Look at people who became billionaire. People who did great things. Some of them did not follow the rules all the way. For you to become great, like for Bill Gates, he had to make sure that he becomes a degree holder. But he didn't. His passion for what he wanted to do was so high and so great that at some level he broke out and began to build what he wanted to build. Right now, he's a great billionaire. Why? Sometimes you need to break some rules. Look at the woman who had the issue of blood. She decided, I'm going to break some tradition because I was not, she was not allowed to come and touch Jesus when she had an issue of blood. She was not even allowed to come around where people are. But guess what? Even though that was the tradition. Even though that was the rule of the day. Even though that is what was written. She decided, I am going to press on and catch the hem of the garment of Jesus. And she began to press her and began to press her. She knew if I was found doing this, then I will be killed. But she said, let me break the rule anyways. I must get my blessing. You cannot bring flavor if you are busy trying to follow rules the way they are. There's some rules that have to be broken for you to get what you need to get. We have to do something. Praise the name of the Lord. Hey, praise the name of the Lord. You cannot wait until everything is brought on a silver platter. You have to understand there are some things you tell the devil, devil, I'm not waiting. In the name of Jesus, I enter. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to, you have to, you have to. Refuse, don't accept everything. I know a story of a sister that who was sacked from her job and the boss said tomorrow don't come we've sacked you you're no longer secretary here go your way and she received the sacking letter she went back home told God God I think my time in that company is not over I refuse that sack I will not accept the sack guess what in the morning eight o'clock she reported back to work and when she came her seat had already been given to someone else a new employee had come who was sitting in the same desk and sitting in that place but she told herself I am not moving from this place when the new employee said I thought you were sacked she said no two of us cannot be in the same place at the same time you are in the wrong office this is my office you are in the wrong office this is my office the next day she appeared again the following day she appeared again for one week she was still coming back to the office at the end of the day the boss started disliking the new one and said I want my old one back and gave a sack to the other one and she sat on her seat sometimes you have to refuse don't accept every rule they are saying it is this way so that you can keep following don't accept it 
Look at David. It was the norm and the custom when you're fighting giants, and especially a giant, you have to wear a certain regalia. You don't go to war with a sling and a stone. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't do it with a sling and a stone. But the boy had some sagacity, had this confidence that the God that I serve will give me the Philistine. And she took the stone, took the sling. People are waiting for him to get the javelin and to get the spear, to get the shield. And Goliath was coming with a big shield. You know, he was very strong. Read the Bible, you will see the head of Goliath's spear, the head itself was seven kgs, that kameto part, like that. He did not even need to, to, to push it on you. <laughs> In a sink, to katumbo. Oh, man. <laughs> he did not even need to do that. His shield alone was big, was big that, that even you could not penetrate him. His, the helmet was something else. But David was looking at this giant, he was seeing, Hey, it is not that you are too big for me to fight you. You are too big for me to miss you. Too big for me to miss you. So he took the sling, did it like this, brought another way of fighting that had never been seen. Hello? Brought another way of fighting that has never been seen and drove the stone to Goliath's head and if you read the Bible, you will see from henceforth, we had people who were ambidextrous, who could sling with one and the other hand. Where did they come from? There was a slinger in the Bible who knew this is the way. And even though you fight it like this, I have come with a new way of fighting. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to decide to break some rules. We cannot be taking the gospel just the same way. There are some new ways, there are some things we can do, and you have to make sure you do them. Don't be saying it has to be this way, it has to be that way. Think. There's something new that God has for you. Praise the name of the Lord. There's something new. For you to bring flavor, there's a new way you can do business. Hello? There's a new way you can do business. There's a new way you have to bring flavor. I mean, long time ago when we were growing up, people were not singing while selling mitumbas. Then at a certain point, people realize when you sing, people come. So they, you would see them singing. They would say, And they would, and they would sing. I remember there's a time I would even just go to Gikomba to hear them singing. I'm telling you, those people would sing. At the end of the day, you find ulinunua kakitu apo. Praise the name of the Lord. Why are you just thinking the conventional way? This is the way things should be. Mm -mm. Sometimes you have to decide. You have to be radical. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to be radical. You remember the story that I told you of, of a sister who waited to get married and no one was coming? Hello? So she went before God and he told God, God, I want this size of a man. Went and bought a suit of the size of a man he wanted, size of the shoes he wanted, size of a chest he wanted, size of everything he wanted, and put it in the house on a hanger. Every day she would wake up, she would say, my man, you are coming inside that suit. You are coming inside that suit. You are coming inside that suit. When she got someone who wanted to marry her, and she felt this is the right person, she gave the man the suit, and the man fitted everything. It was fitting exactly that way. That is the suit he used for the wedding. Why? Because someone decided, I cannot not just be sitting waiting. I have to figure out and tell God something has to happen. Something has to happen. And you have to come to a level where you say, I will do something like this woman. I cannot sit here. She began to speak to herself. Number two, way to bring out your favor. You have to value relationships. Value relationships. Value. You know, Breaking, you have to break them, my brother. You remember the story of the men we talked about last Sunday who were carrying a paralytic? Everyone enters the house through the door, not the roof. 
But for you to bring flavors, there are some things you have to say, this has to happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, value relationships. Amen. Nehemiah was away, far away, but he had a connection with his forefathers. He had a relationship with his people. He had something he had to keep with them. Praise the name of the Lord. He had, even though he was far away, he valued that relationship. Please tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. value relationships. It is important for you to value relationships. It is very, very, very important. Some of you, some relationships cannot even last than a matchbox fire. Cannot last, outlast that. Some of you, it cannot even outlast one hour. Your relationship, it just, then if, ah, may forget. When God connects with someone, value that relationship. Can I hear a big amen? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, we are a family. Yeah. Even us here, we are related. Do you know that? Yeah. Hey, do you know that? Yeah. We are related. For us to bring the flavors, we have to value this relationship we have. Any man that values money more than his family, the family will never last. True or false? The children will grow. And they will become something else. And they will be strangers in the same house. Because you are busy, you are busy, you are busy. Haven't you heard the story of the woman that was so busy, 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 that one day when she came, the own, her own daughter greeted her as auntie. Auntie, umekuja. Then she turned and went to the house and called her mom, auntie amekuja. And the woman tried to tell the baby, I am your mother. But the ma baby, I, you are not my mother. Auntie, you are. This one is my mother. And kept calling her mother, kept calling this one the mother, auntie. The woman could not believe it. She had to cry. She even had to resign. So that she can spend time with the daughter. Because money, money, money. You follow money, 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 money. You lose the flavors that you're supposed to release on your children. God kind of flavors. Busy out there. They grow not even knowing you. They think you're auntie. Hello? Family, you have to value relationships. This one said, I cannot be happy. When even the tombs of my forefathers... They're in a city that is in ruin. The people that I'm connected with, I, they're in a city that is in ruin. So he had to go and make sure he did something about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Please tell, tell your neighbor, neighbor, value relationships. You know, we need to live together for many years. There's nothing wrong if we grow old together. Do you know that? There is nothing totally wrong. Me, I would want to see you. I would want to see your grandchildren. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you imagine us seeing Arnold? He's here. He has grown gray hair. He's very old. Hello? He's very old. And he's just doing what he does for God. Can you imagine you seeing a do and, and, and he's too old. Too, he's, all his beards are white. All his hair has disappeared. And he's just telling you, to I mean, there is nothing wrong. Why should we have short-lived relationships? When your family is meeting, you should value that family. Do you like my message? Yeah. The way you're looking at me is that, like you don't like my message. Because I'm telling you, the worst place that people can be in trouble these days is in the church. Because churchy people never take care of each other. They don't value relationships, but not in this church. We have to stand one with another. You have to do. Nehemiah went all his way to save his people. Sacrificed everything to make sure his people are okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at a neighbor. Say, neighbor, what are you doing about our relationship? Look at another and say, neighbor, what are you doing? This should be a paramount thing, something that you value. And you know when you value, there are some things you do. Praise the name of the Lord. In a relationship that you value, number one, 
Number one, you love those people yeah. unconditionally. Yeah. Write that one down. Write it down. In fact, write it down. So, let me do it so that I can close it. If you value a relationship, you have to love the people in the relationship. Number two, don't compete with the people in your relationship. No competition. Because if we live competing one with another, we'll not bring flavors. The God kind of flavor. Don't compete. We complement one another. True or false? Because when competition is there and people are competing, because you've had so-and-so is throwing a party, even you the same, same day, because you don't like that person, you also throw yours. <laughs> you also throw yours. Eh? And you send people invitations. The same invite, you know people, these have been invited. You also send the same invitation. Competition. Hello? Tell your neighbor, don't compete. Look at our neighbor, say, neighbor, if you compete with me, you're just hurting yourself. Did you tell them that? You are here to complement one another. Can I hear better, amen? We are here to do what? To complement each other. Number three, when you value a relationship, you don't gossip. You don't gossip. People who gossip you, they don't value you. They don't value the relationship you have. They're actually jealous. They would wish they were in your position. That's why they are gossiping you. Look at our neighbor, say neighbor. In house of grace, we don't gossip. Yeah, we don't gossip here. Even me, if you come and gossip, you want to gossip and tell me something about Bagwin, then the first thing I'll ask you, if I call Bagwin, will you still repeat what you're saying? Will you still repeat what you're saying? I'm, I'm the worst person for you to gossip with me. I'm just the worst. We don't gossip. Praise the name of the Lord. If you value a relationship, you pray for it. Number four. Pray. You see how Nehemiah prayed and all that. Then, number five, because of time. If you value a relationship, let me give you two more. You have to fight for it. You have to fight for it. Can you say we're in a relationship? You know, when we're in a relationship as a church, because you belong to this family, you have to be ready to fight for this family. That's how we bring flavors. Hello? That's how you bring flavors. We cannot allow people to go through things and suffer in this house and we are there. Very few are agreeing with me. And we cannot allow people to say all manner of things and we are quiet. You have to ri rise up and fight for what you know belongs to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hey, praise the name of the Lord. You have to rise up. Because when you value a relationship, you have to fight for it. As a church, this is our relationship. We have, we belong to House of Grace family. And if there's anything that rises up against us, we have to rise up and fight for it. You have to say, I'm going to fight for it. There is no way you can, I can allow my church to go down. There is no way I can allow my church to suffer what is suffering. There is no way I can allow my people to face what they are facing. When I am here, I will stand to advocate for what I believe in. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Some people are not saying amen. Say amen. amen. Whoever is saying amen is not willing to fight for us. Say amen. amen. Uh -huh. number, number six, you have to forgive 
Because there is no way you can be in a relationship with someone and you don't wrong each other. That person will wrong you. That person will do something that you will feel it has hurt you. And at the end of the day, you have to forgive. People have to forgive each other. Praise the name of the Lord. In the house of the Lord, we have to forgive each other. That is how you bring the flavors, the God flavors in your life by living in forgiveness. You have to, you have to bring the God flavors by living in forgiveness. Without forgiveness, it cannot happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Then lastly, I want to close. How do we bring these flavors? Know that God is counting on you. God is counting on you. Can you say, God is counting on me? I cannot hear. Can you shout and say, God is counting on me? One day there was a woman who was a queen and she was enjoying her queenship. When Mordecai came and told her, our people are suffering. And she was busy, hesitant, being there. Then Mordecai told her, don't think by you just being here that you will be safe. If you don't rise, God will rise up a redeemer from someone else, somewhere else. She realized God is counting on me. And at that time, Esther tells Mordecai, go tell the people to fast for me. And me and my maids, we will fast. And we will go before the king. And when we go before the king, we are seeking favor. Against the rule of the day. Because she was not supposed to appear before the king be without being summoned. So she goes there. And guess what? She's able to save the children of Israel. To bring a different flavor in their life. Because of what? She decided to act on what she knew. God was counting on her. I came to tell you, God is counting on you. And I quote what Isaiah said, Who shall I send? The eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro. Who shall I send? If there are people who need to be saved in this Mombasa, God is asking, can I count on you? Can I send you? Can I send you? If there are people who are supposed to come to church and they are not here, God is counting on you. He's looking at you. You are the flavor that they need to test, they need to see, they need to have in their life and is counting on you. Shall you stand up to be counted or you will not stand up to be counted? God is looking for a man. Who shall I send? Who shall I send? As a church, we look for workers. God is counting on you. Sitting on the seat and not doing anything will not help. As a church, we need to go out there and to bring people to, to Christ and to evangelize. And God is counting on us. Who shall I send? He's asking. Who shall I send? Because when you sit there and he's counting on you, he says clearly, don't think you shall be safe. God is counting on you. Nehemiah had to rise up because God was counting on her, on him. David had to rise up because God was counting on him. Esther had to rise up because God was counting on him. Jesus had to come and raise disciples who had to rise up because God was counting on them. I came to ask a question. Will you answer the call that God is counting on you? He says you are the salt. Not anyone else. You are the salt. The world needs you. The world needs the taste. The world needs the flavor. The world needs someone to penetrate, to bring change and to bring taste and to bring flavors. And he's asking, who shall I send? Sitting on the four walls will not help us. Who shall I send? Who shall I send? When last did you take the God flavor out there? Are there people who can say I got born again because you are the one who preached to me? Are there people who can say I'm in church now because you are the one who invited me to the house of the Lord? Are there people who can say I am now married because you, en you encouraged me to remain in the marriage? Are there people who can say I am enjoying a good health because you stood with me in prayer? God is counting on someone. Is there a building somewhere 
that people can say, we're enjoying all this comfort because you did something. Are there children somewhere who are saying, we are having it nice because you gave yourself. God is counting on you. And he wants you to do something. Can you imagine if David would have refused and said, you know, me, I'm not even from the clan of Saul. Me, I'm not even supposed to be here. Me, the excuse that people say, me, I'd not even planned, because for him, he had not even planned. Do you know that? He had not even planned. He was just taking what? Delivering pizza to his brothers. Delivery. Then he realized, ah, this wall has a stalemate. And me, I have to do something. If David refused, would there be that mighty conquest? If Paul would have told Jesus, Mimi, Siandiki Bible, I've been beaten too many times. Beaten. I'm leaving this call. Would we be talking of Paul? You know, sometimes you go through problems and you're saying, Mimi, Siendi Uko. Kwanza yo church, Mimi Sikai. Venye wame nifanya. Venye pastor na niangalianga. Every day when he preaches about sinners, he only looks to the side that I'm seated. Kila saa, akisema people are blessed and angaleo. Akini, when he's talking about sinners, ni said yangu tu anangalia. Mimi yo church, mimi siendi. And when you keep saying that, you go. Paul was beaten. But in the morning, he woke up in the same city to preach the word. If he would, he would have given up, he would not be celebrating the victories and the books that Paul had written. If you choose and say, me, you know, it has been hard. I'm leaving. And God is counting on you. Will your blessing come? Some of you, there are things you're supposed to be doing. There's a certain flavor that is missing in the worship team. There's a certain flavor that is missing in the ushering. There's a certain flavor that is missing in the church. There's a certain flavor that is missing in the catering department. There's a certain flavor that is missing in the sea church. There's a certain flavor that is missing in the deco department. There's a certain flavor that is missing. There's a cert certain thing that is missing that is in you. And all what you need to do is to know the reason why you are here. Give us Matthew 5, 13. We close. Message translation. I want to close. I like the way you're looking at me. Am I boring? I stop. Because the way you're looking at me is like, I'm boring. I'm boring. Message translation. Let me tell you why I want us to read together. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Now tell your neighbor. Let me tell you why you are here. Tell him. Have you told your neighbor? Let me tell you what else to tell your neighbor. You are here to be salt seasoning. Tell your neighbor. That brings out the God flavors of this earth. There is something you need to bring out. And you need to bring it out. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Look at the neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. bring it out. Neighbor. We are closing with that. Say, neighbor, neighbor. why are you hiding it? Amen. Bring it out. Neighbor. Look for a neighbor who has faith, who believes there is something in them. Say, neighbor, neighbor. bring it out. Neighbor. It has to come out. It has to. It has to. We need you to do something. Hello? We need you. We need you. We need you. If you are a man, there is something you can do in the house of the Lord. I'm if you are a man, look for men. Can you look for men who are next to you? Say, man. Can you say, man? 
In fact, say like, like someone who's travel, say, man, yes. what are you doing? Yes. Look at a man again, say, man, yes. what are you doing? Yes. Look for a lady next to you, say, lady. Yes. Tell them, lady, yes. you've been slaying for too long. Yes. What are you doing? Hello? Hey, slay queens. Slaying in Asia. Ah, we want to do something here. Flavors. We need to bring the flavors in the house of the Lord. Stand up on your feet. You are the salt of the earth. He says, let me tell you the reason why you are here. Let me tell you the reason why you are here. I've been asking myself this question. This same question that I'm asking. If your spouse was married to another spouse, would, be, would they be better? If your children had other parents, would they be better children? If the church was to have another member and not you, if that department was to have someone else and not you, if that leadership position was occupied with someone else and not you, would it be a better place? Would we be a better church if it were other members here and not us, us would be somewhere doing other things. Would it be a better church? There is a reason why we are here and we need to bring the flavors. Lift up your hands. Talk to God. Nehemiah did his part. You can do your part. You can do your part. You can do your part. Some of you, there are some things God has shown you to do. You are still not doing them. I bring the word of God to you. This is the time. This is the time. This is the moment. This is the time. 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 Is the time. Talk to God. You're not praying. You're whispering. Just talk to him. You're whispering. Choir, if we had another choir, would we be having a better worship here? Or it is us that God is counting on us. Talk to God. Talk to God. If salt loses its saltiness, if it loses, if we were to lose the salt, would be nothing values in the salt that we give, the flavor that we give. Our values in the thing that we give, not what we receive. Giving the flavor. The change that you bring. The change that you bring. The kingdom of God is counting on you. I want you to reconcile with God. Two more minutes. Talk to him. Your name is strength. Shada kota kota. Your name is power. Shada bosike abozande. A strong tower. Make me sing. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Zuka taraba sika.
Thank you, Jesus. We are crying, oh, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. We are I don't know. I don't know where you're touched. I don't know where you're touched. You want to make your commitment, telling God, I want to bring out. I want to be that man to be counted, that woman to be counted. I want to. I would just want to encourage you, if you can, just come to the altar. We pray with you. We'll be done quickly because of time. Just come to the altar. I'll pray with you. You want to be that woman to be counted, that man to be counted. Just come. should we wait for another? Are you the right one? Are you the right prophet? Are you Jesus the Messiah? Or should we wait for another one? And Jesus stood and he was worth his salt. Are you the one? Are you the one to be counted? Or we should wait for another? You are saying I want to be counted. I don't want God to look for another one. I don't want. It's an answer we have to answer. All of us Jesus had to answer it. All of us, we have to answer it. Are you the one? Will it be better because you're there? Or it will be hard because you're there? Will it be complete because you're there? Or it will be incomplete because you're there or not there? You want to be counted, just come. Come. Yes. Lift up your hands. Talk to God. Tell him I want to be counted. Tell him I want to be counted. Yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I stand by you. I decree may you be counted. May you be found worthy of this call. Father, let them not miss.